Hi folks and welcome back to my channel and this is another video of Old Rusty and yes I know it's been a while but I've been so busy with other projects but now I have time again for Old Rusty. So we're going to fix this door because that door is in a very bad shape. We've done the left hand door already now we need to do the right hand door. Uh, one of the issues with that door is that it's so far gone that it's going to be a lot of work actually to repair it. So I might find another solution. And you might remember that we picked up a couple of doors in France last year and this is one of them. So this might be the one that we're going to use as a donor door for Old Rusty. However, the hinges are a bit different. And there's a couple of other things wrong with this door. Uh, the bottom side is gone as well, but not as bad as the old door on Old Rusty. So what we're going to do in this video is to remove first of all the old door and then match up the hinges and see if we can fit uh, this replacement door and then actually fix this replacement door because even that one is bad. So the first thing we're going to do is take the door off and then match it up with the second door. But the hard part is to get these bolts out of this frame. They are so rusted and they've been in there so long so it's going to take a bit of effort and there are many different ways of doing it. Uh, one more destructive than the other one. That's where they are. You see that? And it's not even a cross uh, or a hexagon. It's just a slotted screw. So the screwdriver will slip out very quickly. So we have to find a way to get those out. Removing old screws on a rusted vehicle can be very tough. Now there's a couple of methods that will help you and I'm using DWD-40 as a spray to release the screws as much as possible but that often doesn't work on a really rusted screw but it helps for sure. The alternative is that you use an impact screwdriver um, so then you put it on the nut or the bolt or whatever it is or the screw and you hit it with a hammer in the back and then you hope you can get it done but as you can see the screws that we have here are slotted screws so that's going to be a bit tough. The other way you could use a impact hammer, right? A pneumatic one. That's what I have here. <coughs> Very good. So I put a bit up there, uh, which is a slot bit, so I can put it in, in, in the screw and then try <coughs> to get it out. That works sometimes, but not always. Another way of doing it is actually to use a little blowtorch and actually heat up the screw, um, you know, as much as you can and then uh, use any of the other tools uh, to release the screw. That typically works well. So I'm going to heat them up and then try it and I'll show you a few methods. But I'm afraid I will have to revert back to more drastic matters, which is uh, actually drilling out the uh, screws uh, with a special bit. Now, if you're going to drill out screws, uh, you may want to use a reverse bit. And this is a reverse bit, so you can use a reverse bit. Uh, to drill the screw out and because it's a reverse bit it may actually take out the screw properly while you're getting deeper into it. If that doesn't work either then you could just drill a hole and then use a reverse tap. That's another method but I have bad experiences with taps because they've been broken off a couple of times. So my options really are heat it up, try the impact uh, hammer and if that doesn't work, I'm going to drill it out and tap new thread in it or even have to put an insert in. So uh, let's get on and let's start. Uh, I'm going to start with heating it up and then use the impact screwdriver and see if that is going to work or not. So let's heat it up and then we try the impact screwdriver. There we go. That keeps slipping. I'm going to try to put a deeper groove into the screw uh, with a Dremel and a small grinder. So now let's heat it up again and uh, see what happens. 
very handy torch for this kind of purpose. It's a butane oxygen type of uh, torch. There we go. You've seen on how I actually removed the screws quite easily with an impact screwdriver and some heat. Uh, that always works, that's a great combination. Of course, you've got to watch out that you have no uh, trim inside that can cut fire or electrical wires and stuff like that. But the small blowtorch like this one is very handy for this kind of work. Uh, you may have to cut a deeper groove in it. Uh, if the groove is worn out already, then you might have to cut it a bit deeper so you have a better bite with your impact screwdriver. For that, a Dremel with a small disc is very handy. So now let me do the top one and then we'll take the door off. And as expected, one didn't want it to play, so now we will go and drill it out. sometimes hard to get the bit go into it so that's why I'm going to use an apple and this is an apple that will clean it up a bit I would think So that should be it. So now we should be able to get it out. And here it is. Almost. There we go. This is the piece. We got it out. And now we can remove the door. So I have the screws removed from the hinges. Uh, one was a bit tough. I had to drill it out. The rest went quite smoothly. So now let's take off the door. Um, I'm holding it in place a bit with this Dremel here. So it can't fall. Let's see how easy that is going to be. And that is not going to be that easy. As you can tell, it is probably all rusted into place. See, it's gonna help us. Yep, there we go. The next thing we're going to do is trial fit um, this replacement door and let's see how that works. It has quite a bit of damage on this side, so we'll have a bit of work there, but it's not too bad. So let's move it up and see if we can get it in. I'm a bit lazy guy, so I'm using this uh, engine lift because these doors are a bit heavy and I'm a bit of an old man. So let's try to move it in a bit. I just want to make sure that this door fits before I do any work on this. And you can, of course can always try to place them on top of each other, but I think this way is the better way to do it. That looks like it's going to be a fit. All right. So I think this is uh, going to be a good fit. Uh, the door fits nicely all around. There's going to be a little bit of work on this door, especially at the handle area. It's really been bent and dented, so that we'll have to fix. But all along, I think this is matching up not too bad. And again, it's a bit loose. I have a bit more opening on the bottom, 
but okay, the door is not fully in and yet. So. The next thing I'm going to do is to take the door back off the truck and then start working on this door. Uh, the door has um, a problem with the handle here. Well, we need to fix that. It's really dented in, but it also has issues with the hinges. The hinges over here are kind of welded on and they are a different type of the ones that are on the original door. So I have to make that the same, take it off the old door, put it on this one. And the bottom of this door is having some other issues. Let me show you that. This is the bottom part of the replacement door. And as you can tell, it is rusted away. So uh, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit so I see more what we have. So then we can decide on how we're going to fix this. So the way we're going to fix this is by actually cutting this part off here. Well, my pen doesn't work too well. Like so. And then here, this piece is all right. So I'm just going to leave that as is. And then I'm going to try this edge to bend it open a bit. And then we make a panel that will go along here and slide under there. And then we weld it in place. So this is a bit what we're going to try to do here. Um, it isn't that much work. I don't know how easy it will be to bend this open this edge, but we'll see. So first I'm going to start by cutting uh, off the old um, metal and then we have a better view of where we are. I've cut off the side here, um, the rotted metal, and now I'm going to clean this up a bit to see uh, where the spot welds are so I can actually uh, try to remove that metal part that sits underneath this lip here. So that's the next thing we're going to do. I see all kind of stuff sitting here. I don't know what that is. Funny. Those sanding wheels with abrasive paper and multiple layers are really, really handy uh, to de-rust or to remove paint uh, from a vehicle or another piece of metal. It, they really work well. They are not cheap, but they are really good. So let's put one up and then we'll see how that goes. I'm going to put my mask and the goggles up because this is nasty. The next thing I'm going to do is to look on the lip for potential spot welds areas. But you have to look very carefully. This is one right here. And I'm just going to go along the whole edge and try to find them. I'm sure there will be more, but sometimes they're a bit hard to find. So these spot welds, we're going to drill out now. So drilling out the spot welds isn't all that difficult. And that looks quite good. So now let's see if we can actually uh, prime it off. It's a bit tough still. Now it's going to work. Removing, um, drilling out the spot welds was an initial thought, but um, things are so rusted, uh, even underneath, that it's going to be very hard uh, to do that and I'm going to damage the edge way too much. So I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to cut the edges off here, uh, all the rusty part, and then I'm going to try afterwards to get underneath with a Dremel and remove all the material which is underneath. <whistles> It's kind of funny, while I was removing this uh, metal here, I found pieces in there. I think this guy must have been a plumber or something like that. <laughs> it's an old ruler. And I think there's even another one in there. That's a bit more stuck in it. There we go. Well, that broke. 
guy. <laughs> I wonder if there's more of those funny things inside. Okay. Right, so I'm going to use a Dremel now to cut underneath this lip. And the only problem is I need to get them in first. Once I got it in, there we go. Now I can start cutting. We're going to start to clean up the inside. And uh, we blast it a bit with the sandblaster. Another ruler in there. And that must be the glazing as well. All the stuff must have fallen down at the time. Alright, let's get it all out. Jesus Christ. It's amazing, isn't it? There's even kind of a newspaper in here. I wonder from what year that is. Oh, shit, now I broke it. I, I can't see the year. Maybe I can find out. Anyhow, all this junk came out of it. Um, what a collection. So now I'm going to um, paint the inside with aluminum zinc spray so it's protected. But I'm going to tape off of course the area where I'm going to be welding because I don't want to have paint in that area because otherwise we have to grind it off again and I don't want to do that. All right let's paint that. Done. Now I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting pretty hungry, so I'm going to have my lunch and then we continue uh, with this work. So this was, uh, here we got the template and that just fits fine. That's how we will fit it. And I already have cut out the metal piece uh, according to the template. And now we're going to bend it along the white line so we can actually fit it. So we're going to bend it and that should go quite smoothly. I know it's not a 90 degree bend, it's a bit less. So let's check it out how far we are with this. Uh, it probably needs a little bit more. Mm, that should be about it. I need to trim it a little bit. I made it a little bit too wide, so... See, that even happens to me, guys. But now we just cut it off and get it all sorted out. So I'm using some small clamps to hold the panel in place. And they are quite handy. Uh, I, I think I got them for like two euros a piece. Uh, so now we are about ready and we're gonna start welding it on the top. But before doing so, I'm gonna grind it a bit more down so I have good solid bare metal for the welding.
so these clamps are extremely handy. So we finished up all the welding and now it's time to clean it up. Um, I didn't do a complete seam, uh, that's not necessary. It's pot welded in different areas. So now I'm going to clean that up and then uh, we start working on the hinges. So this is all finished and now I'm going to drill two holes uh, for draining the water just in case we would get water inside. So folks, so far we have uh, taken the door off the old rusty. Uh, we checked that the new door or the replacement door is fitting properly. We fixed the bottom side, we drilled some holes in it, we patched it up. Now it's time to look on the hinges and on the uh, door handle because that takes a bit of work as well. And for that we will flip it over. That is a frame uh, that will go around the um, rubbers once we put the glazing in. So I'm going to put that aside. I'm happy to have that one because I'm missing that part on the other doors. So it looks like somebody welded on these hinges or at least the outer part of it. So we need to get this off. All right, that's one piece. So I got the uh, hinges out the same way as uh, we did it on Old Rusty by heating it up. And I think they're still a little bit hot. And let's see. Yep, they are hot. So, so let's see if we can get it out now. That one. I think it's still welded on a bit, so we need to grind it off. There we go. That's out. So now we need to clean up this whole area so we can fit the hinges uh, from the old door. Since I had to drill out some of the bolts on Old Rusty for the hinges, and these are the hinges of Old Rusty, um, I will have to retap the holes. And in fact, I don't even have the original bolts, but I'm going to use M8s. So I have to drill them out, and now with a tap, put no thread on it. So um, I got to do about 12 of those holes. We drilled out the holes and now it's time to put new tread in the holes and I'm going to use an M8 tap for that. I'm going to come back sometimes a bit. But this is a brand new tap so this should be working just fine. We drilled the holes in the hinges, uh, we then put new tread up, so now I can fit an M8. But an M8 is having a pretty big head, and the head is a lot thicker than the original bolt that I have over here. So, um, because the bolts are opposite to each other when the hinge is closing, you know, this is becoming real thick, so I may have to turn off a bit on the heads of those bolts on the lathe. But that we'll see later. So right now, let's try to fit them. I 
I think that looks quite good guys so uh, they're done so now let's have a look on the handle the next thing we're going to try to fix is the door handle you see how this is bent in so either I remove this one and I use the other one from old rusty from the old door or we can fix this one I'm not sure so let's see if we can get it off it seems that it's willing there we go all right so now I should be able to remove the inner part but for that I probably need to undo a bolt on the side here I don't know if you can see it but this is the one that has to go out and I'm afraid it's going to be another one of those tight ones there's another one right here so we need to clean that up a bit and I might want to heat it up but let's try no it works if I don't need to heat it up I won't no that one is easy but that's because people put oil on the locks right so now that whole thing hopefully can come out unless there's another bolt or screw somewhere finally I got the hinge out however um, now we need to straighten up this whole area because it was really really badly bent so I'm going to try to do this with a piece of metal and a torch and maybe uh, with an old screwdriver we will be able to lift it a bit so let's see if we can do a bit more I heat it up and I give some light pressure right so now let's do the other side I've been hammering this area we've been beating it uh, but there are some pieces that are broken so now we're going to weld those up first of all And I do it with a very soft weld. We also need to do the other side. There we go. This is all about squeezing and pushing guys nothing more metal bar oh it helps Let's see how that fits. All right, I think this starts to look all right. Uh, see, that looks already a lot better, doesn't it? Um, I think that looks quite good. 
compared to what it was before. Okay. Now, of course, I don't have the lock at the inside, but this looks good. So let's put the door back up. It's been a long day, guys, but um, finally, um, we've got the hinges back. We've got the door handles sorted out. Uh, there's a lot more work to be done on this door. Uh, in fact, also the other door. Uh, the winding mechanism for the windows, all that kind of stuff still needs to be done. But that's going to be for another video uh, because we can't do it all in one video because that would be too much. Um, there we go. I've got the bolts in, not all of them, just a few so the door is holding. So let's relieve this and then see if we can actually close the door or not. The door is fitted and it looks reasonable all right. However, she's pinching on this side here, um, as you can see. So the door fits reasonable well. However, uh, as you can tell, the door is actually very close to the side here. And in the back, I have about a centimeter. So I will need to sort that out. The horizontal line is quite all right. Uh, it fits on the top as well. So what I will need to do is uh, to put up some washers uh, on the hinges at the inside so it pushes that door more backward. And the same thing I'll do over there. But that's just a matter of uh, putting washers in. And at the same time, the door has to come out a bit. And that's why I need to cut in the chassis where the hinges are connected, some slanted slots so I can slide it out a little bit. Not much, it's, it's actually only this side here which needs to come out just a bit. And then we should be okay because here it feels kind of all right. Uh, over here I see as well, it's leaning outward a bit, but I think if the door is gonna tip like this, it's just gonna fit nicely. So guys, I'm not gonna bother you with showing on how to put all the washers and spacers up because this is a lot of fiddling. It's just putting a washer or a little metal plate, you know, tighten it up again, have a look how the gap is, and back and forth until you, it's where it's supposed to be. So I think it turned out quite all right. The door is nicely repaired on the bottom. Now the door is solid. I took the whole mechanism out because I have to recondition that and you'll see that in another video. And the bolts are actually not touching each other so I don't need to grind them down on the lathe or something like that. And because they are kind of offset. So these bolts are in an offset compared to the bolts in the door. So that's the good thing. So folks, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and more videos are to come. The next video will be all about sandblasting the cabin uh, because that's the first thing I need to do now before I stop putting uh, lead or any other kind of polyester fillings up. I think I'm going to use lead, but you never know. Uh, so I'm going to sandblast the whole cabin. So that's going to be the next video coming out. That might take about a week or so because I still have to get the sandblaster, reserve it and get all the blasting sand. Uh, and then we'll see how that goes. So I hope you enjoyed it guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.